All right, so in a previous video, I showed you how logic is a time machine. Don't have anything like that, but we'll show you just a little bit about how it can do something surprising. So up here, it says FLT reset. So if you press that, so it's orange, and turn off all your oscillators. Turn on the filter and crank up the resonance and crank up the cut and play around the filters, but I like the band pass right there. And this is the uh, caps lock keyboard. And now you see that we are getting a tone. And if you notice right down here, you'll see what key, what uh, note I'm playing. And it doesn't matter what note I'm playing, it's still going to be 363.8 hertz, as it says right there. And that, right, the cut off frequency is what determines that. You can see. So, that's just something that you may not have known about, so I thought I'd mention it. I'm going to turn that off, and we'll come back to the os os <laughs> I've been getting this word wrong as I practice. It's the um, oscillator. So, this is a 220A. Um, I'm going to move that over get a little more volume. There we go. You can just see it right there. Now, if we move down to this one, we'll get a triangle wave. There, you can see it's working as a triangle right there. Now, the next one up is a square wave. I mean, a sawtooth. And it does have that buzzy sound, doesn't it? Now, this is a um, square wave. This one here is called a pulse width modulation. You can see there, or even there better, that it's switching between two different states, going back and forth like that. Oh, and one more is the one down at the very bottom. If you control click on the word sign here, you get this, and it goes off the bottom of the screen down to 99. There are 99 different program sounds in here. They're called digi-waves, digi-waves. And it sounds... You can just run through those and see what they sound like and, and look like, because it's like glass. Sounds and looks sort of edgy, doesn't it? So next, let's, uh, let's take a look at what happens if you combine a couple of um, sine waves. Now, this triangle over here switches, or it, it's a balance between each of the different oscillators. So here it's all one, here it's all two, and here it'd be all three. Here it's a mix between one and two. They even give you numbers right there. So, if I move, now this is the um, tuning. Like if I move it down, that's like a, a major fifth down from what I was playing. And this would be a cent. And now just move it at one cent, you'll see as these two waves interact just slightly off, they do this. If you move it down, move that up, make it even more detuned. Now, I'm old enough to remember Twilight Zone on the Outer Limits, and that's what it starts sounding like. Now, if we move this over to here and add a little bit of FM into it, get some more character, too. That's like the spaceship coming in for a landing. Ha! So let's get this back to zero and zero. There. And now, if I press the key, you see a sine wave, but now if I move the FM frequency modulation, you see, that looks like a lower, doesn't it, like a tooth. You can see that it's getting more complex shapes as I move it in, more and more into it. Now if I move this, it gets some interesting interactions. I'm going to move this back down to zero, and up to zero. 
that starts getting all sinuous and wave-like and snake-like and all. So, let's move on to the next thing. If we come over to the bottom right on where the, the caps lock keyboard is, we have the um, ADSR, the um, envelope generator here. And this envelope free is hardwired velocity. And I just turned everything down, so all we're getting is like a click. So the first one, attack, if I move it all the way to the top, it says 10,000 milliseconds, 10 seconds. So it's going to take 10 seconds to get up to the maximum volume. Now if I move this, oh, and if you move it like this, then it depends because I've got it at the highest uh, value here, 127, it goes immediately up there. But if I were to move that down to like 10 on velocity, it's going to take a while for it to get up there. And this is set up by these two, um, whatever they're called, little knobs. So I'm going to bring those all back down to zero. And um, now if I do it, it attacks immediately and decays for 1.1 seconds. Now if I move it up, it's as long as 10 seconds. Now if I move that down and bring the sustain up, like here, it will almost immediately come to the sustain value. Oh, I've still got some oscillation going over here, so let's get rid of that. Get the detuning out of the way. So I'm going to move the volume back up. What was, oh yeah. Now the last one is release, and that one's right here. So if I move it up where it says 2200 milliseconds, it's going to take 2.2 seconds for it to fall down to um, zero when I release the key. So, and if I release it now, it takes two seconds for it to get down to nothing. So, quick look in the sight of uh, what the uh, envelope generator does, or the envelope for volume does. Now, one more thing is here. Now, if you don't see this, come over here. It'll be, look like this or like this. Come to router. And this second oscillator, or the first oscillator, either one, is, um, well, actually, the second oscillator is sine, which is this one here. So, if I hit the key, and then move this up or down, it starts cycling through various... Um, oh, I haven't set the LFO yet. So come down and set the source to LFO. And now, yeah. You can hear as it changes. You can go either direction, and it starts whatever is there, and just moves through the values. One more quick one, just for fun. Let's move that to pitch. Turn that one off, as a matter of fact, and leave that with an LFO. Mm -hmm. Now this lets in um, how much is amount is going to be allowed to modulate. This gives the uh, range, basically. And if you click there, it resets it to zero. So let's... Um, Move this up a little bit. Move that down a little bit. You can see it running through the uh, hertz. If I remove that up, it would go for a larger range. And if I were to move to the other direction, instead of high to low, it goes low to high. All right, so that's just a quick look at basic waveforms and um, we're going to leave from here. Experiment, play around, have some great fun, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.